Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Now this might actually be a bit of a record because I recorded a pickup video uh, maybe an hour, an hour and a half ago and I said in that pickup video this was going to be my last video of January and within maybe an hour, an hour and a half immediately I'm a liar. So I guess I have one more video to make in January because this kind of came across my view on Instagram. So it might have been post posted in Twitter or somewhere else, but the, I caught it on Instagram and then suddenly I started looking into it. And I also asked some questions, so I figured I would do a video on it. Now, quick caveat as always, uh, not everybody uses the PWCC platform. Not everybody likes it. It's one of those things where if you have no use for it and you don't like it, then this news isn't going to affect you in any way, shape or form, by all means. So I would just point that out to you and remind you that you clicked on this video for some reason. But if you are interested in it, well then listen on because I, I do... I want to explain what this is and also talk about a couple of things that I'm keeping an eye out on for me. So this is another situation where the content gods knocked on the door and said, hey, you're not done. And I said, wait, what's going on? And I looked into this a little bit further. So here's what it basically comes down to. And I'll include a link to this in the description for you so you can listen to the video here that's being played and also read into it yourself. But I'll give you a quick rundown. So what they said is for the month of February, what they're going to do for the auctions is they're going to open up on any item that all access bidding is what they call it. Now you no longer have to place a qualifying bid to participate in extended bidding for both weekly and premier auctions. Now this is important. There's a couple of immediate thoughts that came to mind with this. And uh, one of them is that as a bidder, who's someone who has found stuff on the platform for my player collections and also for some of my vintage sets that I'm working on, I've actually been able to find some stuff at reasonable prices, even with the buyer's premium. So your mileage may vary, but I've actually been able to have some success with it. So it's worked out for me. I'm not a fan. Biggest reason I'm not a fan is because immediately it removes one of the little tactical things that you have to do. The whole qualifying bid thing, just to explain it to you for the unfamiliar, is they have a whole segment of extended bidding where once it passes a certain threshold, the countdown timer reaches zero, and then you had to have at least placed some kind of a bid on the item in order to be able to continue bidding into extended bidding. The first segment is half an hour, and then it goes on, I believe, another half an hour, and then goes to five-minute increments, and then it gradually speeds up until... The auction ends and there are no more bids. Once one of the timers runs out and there's no more bids from there, then whoever is the lead bidder at that point wins the auction. Most of the time it doesn't go more than a couple rounds, but it depends on the item, of course. Bottom line, though, is you have to place a qualifying bid in order to even be eligible to continue into the extended bidding. Well, what they're doing here with that is they're actually dropping that restriction. What that means, though, is it means as long as you're logged in, you can pass the 10 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm using the weekly auction as an example. The premiere is a different thing. But for the weekly auction, Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern time is usually the time at which uh, it crosses over into the extended bidding. But what this means is somebody could be sitting there, have done nothing until 10 p.m., wait until 10 p.m. starts, let the clock start there, and then start bidding at that time. Now, one thing I wanted to clarify, and I reached out to the PWCC Marketplace Instagram here, and I asked them, I wanted to ask them specifically is, is the restriction just for the beginning of extended bidding? Or can someone wait through multiple rounds and then be able to still participate? So the answer I got, and this is from PWCC Marketplace themselves, they say, you do not need to place a bid in the first round of extended bidding to participate in the later rounds of extended bidding during the month of February. You can bid on any item at any time as long as it's still live. Now, a couple of quick thoughts from that. I understand it from the perspective of trying to encourage additional action, because if somebody forgot or didn't catch it in time or whatever, and 10 o'clock passes, well, then you can't participate, so you lose out on a potential uh, bidder. So from that perspective, I get it, because obviously they want to get as many bids as possible, and they want to make as much money as possible. But that also means it's harder for somebody like me to get deals, because if, I'm if I made sure to at least get in my qualifying bid, and usually what I'll do strategically is I'll pick a couple different items that maybe potentially I want to bid on, and then I wait until the end of the time. I, I place a qualifying bid on all the ones that I'm interested in. And then I wait to see kind of what it's looking like. The end result of that, though, I think what's going to happen is I think you're going to find yourself with lower bids heading into extended bidding and then potentially more action during extended bidding as more people are able to come in late and just wait, basically try to wait everybody out. But I still think that's going to lead to some higher potentially uh, end results, which is what PWCC wants, obviously. But it's a little bit more annoying for folks that have, were very used to the strategy of trying to do it in the platform previously. Now, the other more practical thing that I'm kind of keeping an eye on that I think will be very interesting with this is, okay, the PWCC platform already struggles with the weight of the load. So whatever program they're using, uh, it seems to take up a lot of bandwidth and it struggles and it's crashed multiple times already. And they blame it on, you know, Amazon Web Services. But at the same time, uh, you know, if they don't have more server space or whatever, having more bidders and having the option for more bidders to come on late is certainly not going to take less load on the server. So it's one of those things where from a, a system standpoint, I would be very curious if they're going to have the bandwidth to actually be able to handle it. And it would not shock me if you found it crashing, especially in the first couple of iterations here, when all of a sudden you got more people open it, opened up that can bid that previously wouldn't have had to and wouldn't have had to commit to anything ahead of time, 
where now you can just kind of show up whenever. It'll be interesting to see what this experiment does. Uh, they're doing it for the month of February, they say. So I'll be curious to see. I'll definitely be keep, keeping an eye out on the first couple of auctions for sure. But as a bidder, like somebody who would potentially be bidding into it, this is kind of annoying for me. I understand the idea that they did get some feedback on it, but I'd be very curious to see what, if anything, that does in terms of impacting the final prices. Does it also mean that some people are going to tire kick and not be non-paying bidders? Is there going to be an increase in that early on? That's one of the points that I was uh, chatting with with some folks that we were discussing this about. So those are just some initial thoughts. I think the strategy, it's going to alter the strategy for sure. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that, what if anything that does in terms of the end result prices. It'll be interesting to see what if anything that does to the end result in terms of non-paying bidders. Uh, any additional issue with that and the fact that people can come in late and just wait until the last minute and push, try to push the action, just keep extending it. So I could see there being longer extended bidding because normally it goes a certain amount of rounds. And if you're not participating in it, it limits the pool of the potential bidders and it forces it to people that are willing to keep going. So you basically have to place a bid within those extended windows to go to the next window. And if you don't, it slowly decreases the pool until somebody's left and they're usually the last one standing. So from that perspective, the strategy would change. So maybe that'll mean higher bids, uh, which great for PWCC in terms of getting higher fees and great for the people selling, but not so great for the bargain hunter like myself. So, you know, it's one of those things that happens. And if that's what they choose to do, that's what they choose to do. But it is very interesting that they decided to experiment with this. The other angle of it, like I mentioned, is I could see this very much putting a strain on the server and potentially causing additional crashes, which might mean the first couple of ones might not go off uh, completely. And we'll have to see what that looks like. So anyway, just thought I would throw in some thoughts there since the co hashtag content gods threw this one in at us. Um, if you are someone who does use the platform, I'd be curious to get what your thoughts are in the comment section and I'll take a look at it and we'll kind of have a continue the discussion there. Anyway, so now this is the last video of January. I hope. Otherwise, that's it for me. More videos coming up on the channel, live streams at 8 p.m. Eastern time, where we'll talk about whatever's going on hobby-wise. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much, and we'll catch you in the next one.